the trick to the perfect murder is... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You thought I was going to do the whole video like that? Ah, bring the lights up. Who couldn't trust this face? Come on. Oh, sh can somebody, uh, can somebody fix, fix my, my voice? voice? My name is John Doe Jr. And yes, that's my real name. I'm Hollywood's premier crime consultant. Movie producers call me when they want realistic gang violence, casino heists, or double murders. And just in case anyone's listening in, I have no idea why they call me for help with that. I got to this point in my career through hustling, rising, grinding, rising again, and grinding. It's taken me years to become Hollywood's top crook, but today I'm gonna show you how to make it in this industry. No details spared. I know all about heists. My father pulled a heist that inspired the Michael Caine movie, The Italian Job. And I once pulled a heist that inspired the Mark Wahlberg movie, The Italian Job. No relation. Heist movies are all about collaboration. And I've taught Hollywood everything I know about assembling the perfect team. I just love working with people. Here's an example. Give your crew a theme. When the crew from Fast and the Furious put their team together, they didn't get a, a hacker and a, and a demolitions expert and an architect. They just got 17 getaway drivers. That was based on a real gang, isn't that interesting? Those guys didn't last very long because after they pulled up to the bank, they didn't know what to do, but half of them got away. And that's what matters. Also, keep a funny person around. Movies like Heat put too many serious, competent people together. Real robbers have somebody there to make the other guys laugh. So we're all in this to have fun, right? This is another thing those Fast and the Furious movies nailed. Roman may not have been the best driver, and he constantly put everyone in danger, but he was always good for a laugh. Here's another tip. People think that criminals do their best not to be noticed, and that's just not true. Just like in the movies, most bank robbers are extremely good looking, and they go around with a crew full of loud, funny characters wearing memorable flamboyant outfits. Baby Driver absolutely nailed this one. If you saw those guys out and about, you would definitely notice and remember them. And that's the mark of a good criminal. You can learn something from every type of crime movie. For example, something that's true in gangster movies and in Hollywood is it's all about who you know. My father, the famous crime consultant John Doe, no relation, he believed that in order to be a great crime consultant, you had to truly embed yourself in the crime. He knew all the real life gangsters. Freddy the Fish, Pajama Sam, Pajama Freddy, uh, Sam the Fish, Freddy Sam's the fish who wore pajamas, all those guys. The real trick to getting close with gangsters is to be born into a family that's already gangsters. That's what I did. Allegedly. But if you're not born a gangster, there's a few things that you could do to attract the thugs of the mafia or the gangsters of Hollywood. Number one, hitting people is wrong, but if you have to hit someone, pick something unusual. Bats and pool cues are played out. Pick a signature weapon like a like a Pokemon book or a, or a computer mouse. Hollywood loves this because it makes for a memorable scene and gangsters love this because it makes for a cool nickname. For a while, they called me Johnny Right Click, allegedly. Number two, robbing people is wrong. But if you absolutely have to do it, do it to the sounds of a classic rock or Motown song. Number three, like I said, mob movies are all about who you know, but you can't go sucking up to the boss right away. You have to start small, you know? Befriend a small-time crook in their organization, form an unbreakable bond and work your way up, and then betray them in a power play. This is an important part to any mob movie story, and it'll get you a lot further as a criminal. And hey, if you get the occasional nightmare or feeling of total emptiness, that's just part of the job, right, Tommy? Tommy?
Every once in a while, serial killer movies and TV shows come back and they rear their cute little ugly heads. Now, you might find these guys creepy, but in reality, they've mastered an important part of business success. Branding. John Doe, no relation to my father, killed people in accordance to the seven deadly sins. The DC villain Calendar Man killed people on famous holidays. Uh, Hannibal rhymes with cannibal. See, all of these are great examples of branding. Look, serial killers are always prancing around, being all flashy, getting all the media attention, but they're not the most efficient killers out there, or even the most appealing. That's right, if you kill for business and not pleasure, then you get the high-class rebrand of Assassin. You can even still enjoy killing, but this time you get paid to do it also. It really worked out for some people. Just remember, killers equals scary, assassins equals sexy. And if you ever get confused, just think about which one contains another word for butts. But the best part of this rebranding is how much you can get away with. John Doe, no relation, only killed seven people and he's this scary monster. If the internet's to be believed, John Wicks killed almost 300 people and he's in Fortnite. That's the power of a high class brand. I have been very lucky. I have had a great run in both the crime and the movie industry. But the hustle doesn't come as easily to everybody. You know, sometimes people get caught. But that's no reason to despair. This could be a very lucrative opportunity, because you could sell your story to Netflix. Hey, even before you get caught, it's good to be prepared in case these things happen. So here's some things that you can do to make sure that your life story is perfect for a true crime series. Be really, really nice to your neighbors. That way, when you get caught, they could call f Luigi in, and he could be like, oh, I had no idea he was such a nice guy. They love that. Discuss your crimes in cryptic detail over the phone with a loved one. But remember, and this is the important part, make sure the audio is as muffled as possible. It should be really difficult to understand. The person who does captions at Netflix should have a hard day at the office. Like, uh, speak through a Pringles can or a sock if you can. For example, I should be having a good day at your should be here and seen it. I'll never get caught for the murder that I did, but. Wait, 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 wait. What? Did you just confessed to murder? Yeah, but it's an old one, you know, statute of limitations and all that. There's no statute of limitations for murder. Really? Huh. You can cut that out though, right? All the real life gangsters. Freddy the Fish, Sam Pajamas, Fr Freddy Pajamas. <laughs> Pajama Freddy. Okay, I see my mistake now. Pajama Sam and Pajama Freddy. Sam the Fish, Sammy Pajama. And he knew all the real life gangsters. Freddy the Fish, Pajama Sam, Pajama Fred, Sammy the Fish. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're getting good. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I got four out of six. <laughs> Freddy the Fish, Pajama Sam, Pajama Freddy, Sam the Fish, Sammy Pajamas. That's not, that is the next one. Yes! Five, five. Yes, yes, and yes. Freddy Sam's, the fish who wore pajamas. Okay. Freddy Sam's, the fish who wore pajamas. All those guys. That was good. <laughs> yeah, we got it.